Darwin Platform Group of Companies is one of the fastest growing diversified Indian conglomerates with global footprints. It is setting up offices globally and tying up with companies across the globe for multiple sectors. The company has ventured into real estate and construction, stockbroking and finance, arms and ammunition, mining, airlines and many other sectors. Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today Television. This is Market Today. I'm Sakshi Batra and with me is Shell Bhatnagar. It's the second day running of record highs continuing on the D Street. You talk about the Nifty, you talk about the Sensex, the Nifty Bank. They've all hit record highs on intraday basis. 20,850 seen on the Nifty. You've also seen 47,000 crossing on the Bank Nifty for the very first time. 69,000 crossing on the Sensex for the very first time. And it's a dream run that continues. Uh, Shell, good afternoon. What are you watching out? Good afternoon, Sakshi. Uh, over the last four years, uh, four days, uh, four hours, I've just been watching data and I can't take my eyes off the fantastic uh, price action volume that is coming across uh, frontline counters. Remember, we had discussed that uh, it's the nifty blue chips that will be in demand over the next couple of days because those are the ones that are relatively undervalued compared with the rest of the market. And today, uh, just see how things are blowing out on uh, uh, especially the Adani group. Let's just deal with that uh, in the beginning. Uh, so fresh record high on Adani ports and uh, as well as Adani power. Very, very strong traction coming in. 13% higher on Adani ports, 996. In fact, the stock actually went into four digits for a while uh, at about 1002 was the intraday high. Adani power, 524, 525 in front of me. 13% higher and it's the volumes Sakshi uh, that are uh, being very very interesting as far as uh, uh, these uh, particular group company stocks are concerned. So Adani Enterprises you have a 14% rise at 2876. Uh, the turnover is somewhere like 4900 crores. Adani Ports, uh, Ports the turnover is 3700 crores. Adani Par 2262 crores. Adani Energy Solutions 22,000, uh, 2,241 crores. Adani Green 21,000, 21, 2,132 crores. So huge, huge price and volume action on the entire Adani group. And stocks are up between 7% uh, uh, and 20%. That's the circuit limits action. Absolutely. Uh, let's also welcome our guest on the show. Sony Patnaik is with us, JM Financial. Uh, she's from and she's AVP uh, Derivatives Research at JM Financial. Welcome, Sony, and great to have you with us on Business Today Television. First up, could you tell us your take on the Adani Group stocks and the momentum that you're seeing here? Hey, good afternoon, uh, Sakshi. Good afternoon, Shailen Ren. Good afternoon to all. Uh, see, of course, I think, you know, today we've seen Adani entire, the entire pack of Adani stocks have been uh, hitting their all time highs and, you know, giving you that uh, sort of uh, momentum today. So, of course, I mean, every, you know, each individual stock, beat Adani Enterprises, beat Adani Ports, they're all individually up by, you know, more than seven, eight, nine percent. You know, Adani Ports is already like 10, 12 percent up. So they've crossed, uh, you know, a lot of uh, major resistances hurdles. I think they're trying to form a new base. If I just talk about Adani Ports right here from uh, these current levels i can see that you know it is trying to form a recent uh, base of 900 950 odd levels so that band is going to become its recent uh, you know base so um, any any moment we see it seeing any sort of a small dip around uh, you know 9920 or something so it comes to that range it becomes a support base i think you know you'll be seeing it adani you know this was a particular stock bouncing back from current levels or from those levels and uh, again you know going back to those 1020 1050 odd levels so there's huge volume action there's absolutely no brainer to say that it's a complete fresh breakout the stock could even be possibly heading towards 1080 1100 over medium term that becomes a different picture. But as of now, I think it's a clear cut take that it's quite positive. It's quite uh, strong from a technical perspective. And, you know, it is heading towards those higher targets. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, that's as far as the Adani Ports is concerned. What about the um, cement twins, Ambuja Cements and ACC? They are also among the top gainers on the FNO space. Are you watching out for any of these stocks and do you see uh, this momentum can be chased? Yes, definitely, Sakshi. I mean, even ACC and Ambuja, I think the entire cement factor, uh, sorry, it's a cement sector, if you have to start with, uh, you know, the entire sector had, has shown very good rollovers. I think uh, just individually picking out ACC and Ambuja, of course, there is another clear breakout on charts. Ambuja 480 was that level where it has broken out. It's It was a, that resistance. It's, it's completely out of that resistance hurdle. There's a lot of volumes. There's a lot of, uh, you know, open interest uh, aggressively building up for this particular stock as well. So I think Ambuja, if we speak, uh, you know, just from a technical point of view, it is definitely heading towards 536 to 540 from these current levels. So there's still an upside of uh, approx 30, 35 odd rupees from current level. And 480 is where you have to trail your stop losses. You have to maintain that as a support stop loss in case of any corrective action taken from current levels in case there's a profit booking, uh, which is less likely because the stock and the volumes and the derivative parameters are indicating that Ambuja um, cement is heading towards that 540 odd levels. And uh, you know, simultaneously speaking about ACC, ACC also has seen that you know crazy move from yesterday. In fact, I think 1800 it was a resistance. It crossed that, and now it's just absolutely going bonkers above 2100 levels. So in ACC, if anyone is already holding the positions from yesterday's level, uh, it would be advisable to trail your stop losses at 2100, book partial profit at current levels, which is 2180, trail your stop losses to 2100. And, uh, you know, hold for more high, you know, somewhat higher targets of 2300, 2400 over a period of, uh, you know, another two odd months. So I think both these stocks are looking bullish uh, from current levels. And as the levels I mentioned, just have to follow those. Okay. Uh, there is just a word of caution that I'd look, uh, like to put in. It's extremely dangerous uh, to uh, even entertain thoughts uh, of buying into counters which are up at circuit limit of course it looks very glamorous but should you decide to do that you are most uh, cautiously advised uh, against it and also to take another independent opinion meanwhile we are just marking price and volume action on the entire adani group for the sake of convenience for everybody amongst the nsc 500 the top seven gainers the top eight gainers in terms of percentage are actually adani stocks and i'll go by them one of them uh, adani energy solutions atgl and Anade, uh, adani green are up circuit limit 20 percent higher and the times average their volume is 6.5 times for adani energy solutions adani total gas at 4.8 and adani green at 5.2 times the volume so there is a price uptick of 20 percent and there is a volume surge of multiple times the daily volume the 30 day average now coming to adani power and adani enterprises here the gains are in the vicinity of 15 percent each and since these are nifty stocks the percentage uh, rise in volume is not as much as the cash counters nevertheless adani enterprises has a 5x volume today 1.82 crores and adani port has a 6x volume 3.95 crores apart from that if you look at adani par and the numbers are changing so rapidly that it's very difficult to give the latest one adani wilmar has a 3.5x volume acc 4.4x volume and adani par has 2.3x volume so one needs to be very very cautious when uh, uh, dealing with such uh, immediate price rise and uh, volume bursts on any stock and at the moment let's shift focus back to the market the nifty as we've been rightly tacking since morning uh, is now at uh, 20,830 144 points higher the bank nifty 560 586 points higher 47,016 let's get back in touch with sony uh, when you look at uh, how the distribution of price and volume is across the board, uh, Ms. Patnaik, where do you see technical charts trying to benefit, uh, uh, you know, short-term buyers? 
what are the stocks apart from the Adani group which look good to you? Right. So, Shailendra, first I would like to you know quickly share an overall outlook on the markets. You see, Nifty, uh, obviously, you know, Nifty Bank Nifty both are at its record time highs. But it's a very crucial level at this current moment because we see a few of the parameters, be it technical, be it derivatives, they have all approached overbought zone. So there's a high possibility of any sort of a healthy correction, uh, you know, seeing in both the indices, it would just be an opportunity to enter on dips. So in such a case, it would be a word of caution to not go aggressively long in indices to play, uh, you know, to, to hedge your positions, to trail your stop losses, to even book your profits if somebody has already taken position from lower levels. So in this sort of a structure, in this sort of a scenario, when indices are already in overbought, these stock specific or sector specific play comes right at its best, uh, you know, best level. So if you look at individual stocks, which do not have a lot of weightage on either of the indices, so I'm not going very aggressively on any of the banking counters, although in individual banks, I do see that, you know, private banks have given you that sort of breakout. But uh, just right for the uh, you know current moment, because the indices have come into the uh, overbought zone, it is, uh, it's better that we stick to sectors or stocks, which will not have a lot of impact, even if there is some sort of a corrective action from current levels, or perhaps another 100, 200 points up, and then, you know, it starts correcting. The first would be from the power and energy space. So right today, we can see power grid is one of the stock which has given very clear breakout in fact you know it was one of the stock uh, from very long time it was struggling to cross the 205 resistance so if we see power grid right now it has given you that confirmative breakout above 215 and now it is currently around 220 so there's volume there's aggressive long built positions as well so i think uh, you know from uh, from all the entire everything put together power grid uh, stands out to be a very good buy from current levels keep a very small stop loss of 214 so keeping a stop loss of 214 you can buy power grid at current levels and the targets would be 235 to 238 so 235 and 238 so i think the this is one of the stock that can stand out even if there is any sort of corrective action and the second stock would be polycaps you know polycap perhaps today has been quite a muted uh, player it's not added much but yesterday there was some uh, you know a good long built up positions today is quite silent it typically happens that you know one day when we see a lot of aggressive positions the next day it's quite silent or maybe after two three three days the movement comes in so polycap uh, remains a good buy from even current levels keep a very small stop loss of 5260 and you can see targets of 5480 to 5500 in the coming trading sessions Fair enough, uh, Sony, and I'm glad that you pointed out power grid. Even NTPC is up 3.6% higher, so the entire energy basket is again coming back into flavor. Um, uh, you know, we were looking at stocks like Coal India since morning, and uh, of course now power grid and NTPC have joined has. The Adani power, of, of course, is moving up as well. Uh, so this is as far as the energy basket is concerned. Um, can I take your attention to the banking names now, Sony? And especially, you know, we're looking at the blue chips now uh, taking the front row uh, stocks like state bank of india two and a half percent higher at 609 icici bank 1014 uh, up two and a half percent again in trade today uh, hdfc bank at 1623 that's up by 0.8 percent odd how would you be looking at this entire uh, blue chip basket and anything that strikes you at this point and uh, you'd be a buyer Definitely, Sakshi. I think quickly just taking, uh, you know, covering SBI. I think SBI is heading towards 620 at max. There's a very, very crucial resistance awaiting SBI at those levels. Last, I think once, uh, you know, it was consolidating somewhere around in the month of July, we can see it tried to test 620 plus levels. It tried to sustain. It failed. And then we saw it uh, falling down all to the levels of 560 and below. So I think uh, that's again where SBI will be heading towards whether it's able to sustain above 620, 625 resistance. Uh, you know, we'll have to understand the overall data, how Bank Nifty is, uh, you know, the, when SBI is able to reach that level. But as of now, 
uh, you know, you can see that 590 is a good support for immediate short term, you know, uh, immediate short term view and it's heading towards 620. But the private sector bank, now something that has actually caught my eye would be ICICI Bank and HDFC Bank to some extent, but first would be ICICI Bank. The reason being is because ICICI Bank is at the cusp of giving you a monthly breakout. I think uh, it was, if I look at the charts, I can see July, August and uh, September to some extent where ICICI a bank was constantly facing a very strong resistance at 1010 levels today it is closing above that 1010 level so it's a monthly breakout now you have to play it accordingly when it's a monthly breakout it becomes a medium term positional play so ICC bank has given you that monthly breakout it is definitely heading to higher levels towards 1050 1080 for you know a month or two and then above that it should also be it should also be ready to take out 1100 so i think i say the bank is a very good play you should definitely go and you know accumulate this at this at current level and uh, you don't need to put a lot or you know don't don't need to put a very strong heavy st stop loss for this particular stock i think 980 also should do the trick for you i think it's as long as it's holding 980 i say the bank is looking to head towards 1100 for medium term it's like most likely a three month sort of a view from current levels and uh, in a current time period uh last about 40 minutes remaining till the markets close okay. but uh, it's uh, the uh, fin nifty's expiry sony could you tell us uh, how uh, would you advise investors to really trade uh, there's a heavy traction around 21000 levels high open interest seen in both call and put Right. So I think Finifty uh, is most likely going to expire, you know, muted at the last half an hour. We can see last half an hour to 40 minutes. Uh, so if anybody, you know, has to see for any sort of buying, it will be a word of caution not to go aggressively net. On the downside, I can see 21,000 is where it is holding its support. However, call writers are getting down aggressively at 21,150 also. So, you know, that's very high from current level. So maybe it won't go up to that uh, high in the last 40 minutes. It doesn't become, you know, there's no such hero zero trades that can be looked at for Fin Nifty at the moment. It's better to just stay muted. And if you're holding already from morning odd levels, it's, uh, you know, advisable to just book your positions out and, you know, let the last 40 hours be played as the market wants to, but uh, avoid straight uh, taking any aggressive positions. Right. And in any case, uh, uh, Business Studio Television uh, does not promote any kind of hero and zero trade uh, uh, within the option space. Uh, one of the most dangerous and I dare say, uh, you know, uh, less than uh, uh, even commonsensical thing to do is to uh, purposely look at trades where your capital can either go down to zero or uh, maybe multiply uh, during the day. There are better things to do and better things to do far more sensibly. Uh, let's look at the broader market, Sakshi. Uh, remember, this is the sixth day of the rally. Uh, as far as the main index, the Nifty is concerned, and uh, we've gone up by a thousand points. Uh, uh, the present rally started at 19,800, uh, uh, and it's 20,824 as far as the index is concerned on the Nifty. Uh, a couple of warnings uh, signs are there, Sakshi, in the market. Let's look at the overall advanced decline ratio. Now, the number of losers on the National Stock Exchange is 1129 compared with gainers which is 905 so there is a bout of profit booking uh, that's happening after this very very steep rally that has come in uh, as far as the broader index is concerned the nsc 500 it's almost even stevens 250 shares in the green 250 in the red as also uh, amongst the 19 indices that we track there are five which are now red which means uh, they are showing losses compared with yesterday and the top loser is the nifty it index down one percent 32341 the top gainer is of course the nifty energy index up three percent 31254 and out of this index out of 10 stocks eight are in the green what else is ticking the nifty metals index is two and a half percent higher 7385 the psu banking index of course uh, uh, is uh, moving fairly sharply 1.3 percent higher and the bank nifty is 1.2 percent higher sakshi i'll also mark uh, some stocks which are at 52 week highs remember these are not record highs so you get a lot of uh, other uh, data in terms of uh, 
uh, where the good uh, price action is building. Uh, just allow me a moment. I'll get that data in in front of you. Actually, there's so many screens that are open on my uh, desktop that it becomes a little difficult to uh, mark good ones. Okay, uh, we'll take out the obvious ones that we've talked about. Power Grid is something that Sony mentioned. Uh, fresh 52-week high here. Medanta 1012. 3.5% higher, NHPC 5910, 3% higher, uh, ICICI Security 715, 2.2% higher, and of course, uh, uh, our old favorite, Canara Bank 43465, 1.8% higher. Sakshi, what are you seeing? A lot of stocks from the metals basket are now coming up shell. So let's look at that. The Nifty Metal Index is now the top moving index. And of course, this sector has shown, uh, you know, periodic uh, movement. And we are seeing a lot of stocks from this basket like Jindal Stainless. That's up by 2%. Wellspun Corp, 5% higher. Hindustan Zinc, 2% up. Steel Authority, up 1.5% higher. Tata Steel, about quarter percent up in trade as well. Um, I'd like to take Sony's view on the metal pack. Anything that looks promising from the entire metal metals basket to you, Sony? It's a definitely, I think, uh, the pick would be Tata Steel. Tata Steel was facing that difficulty to cross 128 odd levels. Mm. It did so like two days ago and now it's uh, comfortably sustaining above that. Even though Nifty is, you know, trying to be the hero of a year and be 140 points up, even then you can, you can see Tata Steel is quite muted. It, it'll, it may take a day or two, but you'll see that movement coming in because Tata Steel is definitely heading towards 135 on very short term basis. 135 visits another day. Resistance. The moment it's able to cross that rate, uh, major resistance of 135, the stock will rally. You, you'll see very good, uh, you know, breakout coming in that particular stock on a positional basis, and it can test 140 plus levels immediately. So I think that this is a good pick. And uh, if one has to put a stop loss, I think 128 on immediate basis should do the trick. So 128, a very small stop loss. 135 to 140 would be your initial targets. Okay. Uh, the oil and gas space is continuously buzzing. You have at least a fourth day running for sure uh, for BPCL and HPCL to continue their upward run. One, one and a half percent higher for these ones. IOC is up by over a percent again. Now, even Mahanagar gas is joining the party. Uh, you're also seeing Indraprastha gas, Gujarat gas, some of these uh, mid-cap counters that are up in trade as well. Petronet LNG, that's up by a quarter percent in, uh, as well. So, a lot of these oil and gas names are also buzzing in trade. Uh, any uh, top pick that you'd pick from uh, here, Sony? I think uh, the entire space definitely is not showing you any sort of exhaustion as of yet, as of now. Uh, but it would be uh, better that if we can see some dip, you know, so that the fresh entry can take place. So most likely, you know, in HPCL, we look at 350 being the new base that it's trying to form. So if 350 is a base and the CMP is 380, it is advisable that if you see somewhere around 365, 360, then it becomes a better pick and uh, the proper range to enter. So I think uh, keeping that in mind keeps stop loss at 350, which is your new base. It should bounce back again to go above 380, 390 plus levels. Because as of now, I can see that maybe 400 can act as a resistance. There are not a lot of call writers who have exited the position from 400 call, which is indicating that it can see it. Uh, you can see some sort of her hurdle. So HPCL becomes that better pick from this uh, entire space. Just wait for some dip. You see around 370, 365, like I said, keep a small stop loss, 350, and then enter. And then you'll see the targets of 390 plus levels again. So that would be far more better strategy to play instead of just currently jumping at current levels and then, you know, facing that resistance hurdle and not being able to book out your profits. At the moment, 141 points higher, 20,827. Remember, the high for the day uh, has been 20,850. And at the moment, uh, the Nifty is uh, very busy negotiating uh, the second resistance of 20,827. Uh, in the morning, we had marked an option call, uh, which was uh, uh, for the week ended December 7th on Nifty, the 20,700 call. Uh, it had started around 128, 129 rupees in the morning. Uh, we had marked it at that point of time. It had peaked at uh, uh, about uh, 185 during the day, uh, somewhere around 1 p.m. or so, uh, 11 o'clock. Uh, 
to be precise and is now again moving up at the moment 171 uh, this is something that needs to be uh, kept in view so actually uh, another stock uh, that is uh, uh, going rapidly up is rallis india uh, this is again a counter uh, that has re reflected more pain than anything uh, over the last uh, three four years at the moment 254 and a very very sharp uptick coming uh, on very substantial volumes uh, uh, about 76 uh, uh, lakh shares have been traded on rallis india as far as price action is concerned and uh, at the moment it is at its highest level uh, over the last one year or so uh, this is something to be watched uh, uh, of course miss patnaik had marked power grid uh, at the moment uh, it's uh, uh, trading uh, at 222.20 uh, that's a nelson for those who are interested in cricket and of course uh, a very very sharp breakout again a record high so actually what are you watching uh, the tire stocks are buzzing shell um, i remember you were pointing out apollo tires in the morning trade now even siet um, and bal krishna industries mrf they're all joining in the party again um, and of course the auto ancillary stocks like sona blw ingersoll rand they're all so moving up in trade as well a lot of buzzing action coming in in the auto ancillary pack and the tire space too so that's something that uh, one can watch out for uh, sony anything that you can pick from the tire space that like uh, that uh, interests you definitely sakshi i think we should uh, you know focus on apollo tires very very huge open interest taking place today it's a mix of both long and short positions of course i think in the end only we'll be able to analyze it better but as of now it is indicating at long built up positions I, I can also see that you know technically it has broken out above 440 levels so 440 becomes your new base your new support as long as 440 is holding you know you can see some minor dip maybe tomorrow but that should only be a point of entry again and you know uh, again after two days or so it should start moving to 474 uh, 75 plus levels because 480 is the level where you know there's a you know a sort of a resistance hurdle trying to play being positioned themselves with the call writer's help so i think that's where it will go and stop ultimately and you can book your profit so you know keep a small stop loss of 440 and look for targets of 475 on the higher side fair enough well thanks a lot sony for being with us on the show and discussing all these wonderful stock ideas uh, what we'll do is we'll quickly take a very very short break right here when we return we will continue to discuss and discover more stock ideas with you with our other guests who will be joining us right after the break Darwin Platform Group of Companies is one of the fastest growing diversified Indian conglomerates with global footprints. It is setting up offices globally and tying up with companies across the globe for multiple sectors. The company has ventured into real estate and construction, stockbroking and finance, arms and ammunition, mining, airlines and many other sectors. In today's rapidly evolving business environment, when risk is omnipresent, managing risks is no longer just about taking a few boxes. Businesses need to maintain a panoramic view of risks to stay ahead of the curve. Join us to explore how organizations can rethink risk to unlock new possibilities and become fit for future at PwC Presents, de-risking the future in collaboration with Business Today. Welcome back. You're watching Business Today Television. This is Market Today. I'm Sakshi and with me is Shail Patnagar. Also joining us now uh, after the break is another guest who we will be discussing markets and stock ideas with. Shara Dabasti is now with us. He's the head of research at SMIFS. Uh, welcome, Sharad, and thank you for taking the time out. Uh, the market's at record high levels. Yet again, you can see the Nifty is now 153 points uh, higher, back inching up towards the day's high level, 20,843 now being seen again so we are again going to be testing very very soon the all-time high level your own sense of how are you looking at the markets and what exactly are you buying in this current record high market 
Yeah, I think uh, it's a very uh, risk on kind of move that we are seeing in the markets. Uh, ultimately, uh, the election results are out of our way and uh, the interest rate scenario is more or less speaking out globally. Uh, that would be something to rejoice for developing nations uh, because uh, most inflows would be abundant for them because of this uh, lower risk, uh, lower uh, interest rate outlook over the period over the next say, six to 12 months. And that should be very good for all emerging equity markets. The fund flow should be very strong. Part of it we have already seen. Uh, I think the rest of it should also materialize over the next two, three months. Uh, but regarding what we are buying, I think uh, banks is some one space uh, we are very bullish on. And we think that once this risk weight adjustment thing is uh, has been done, I think the impact that the banks had to take has been taken. And uh, there should be very good uh, growth in terms of advances. And the NPA should be very well under control. So that could be one space which would see a lot of re-rating, uh, particularly uh, PSU banks, specifically SBI and Bank of Baroda. And on the private side, I think HDFC Bank has been a rank out performer for quite some time now. But from here on, the type of growth rates, the aggressive growth rates that they are targeting, uh, that should start showing up in the numbers and that should percolate into much higher prices and much better valuations for that stock as well. Uh, IT as a sector could do very well. I think uh, once the risk on comes back and the lower interest rate scenario starts appearing in the US also and more confirmations arrive on that, I think IT could be a very good beneficiary out of that. Okay. Uh, before I uh, engage with uh, Sharadji, I'd just like to uh, mention what the Nifty is doing. Now 155 points higher, 20,840. What we'll do over the next one or two minutes is uh, show you what a call ladder is. And at the moment, I'll again revisit uh, the, uh, the 20,700 call of the Nifty expiring on uh, December 7th. At the moment, it's trading somewhere in the vicinity of uh, 179, 180. Uh, now we'll uh, uh, bid goodbye to this and move over to the next one, which is the Nifty, the Nifty 20,800 call. Uh, the Nifty 20,800 call at the moment is uh, uh, moving in the vicinity of 112 rupees. So this is what is. Uh, uh, the current favorite of the market and we need to start paying attention to this one so 20,700 namaskar bye bye 20,800 is now what we start looking at uh, please mark this price down 109 110 rupees uh, uh, what a day to welcome you sir uh, sixth day of uh, very strong rallies uh, the Modi premium getting uh, fantastically exhibited in the market uh, how are you pacifying clients who haven't put in money as yet? And uh, any word of sympathy for the bears on the Lal Street? Uh, generally, uh, I am on the fundamental side, so I have very little sympathy for the bears as such. Uh, but I think uh, the valuations were not warranting any kind of bearishness. But uh, there was a lot of fear on the street regarding geopolitical tensions. Uh, though they still remain, but I think uh, the interest rate scenario reversing is a very uh, strong trump card to play against any uh, uh, bullish environment. I think uh, that should result in very bullish environment across the markets. And the local elections are about like an icing on the cake. Uh, so I think people who have missed out, uh, the only hope they can have is that they get a 2-300 correction somewhere down the line and then they can think of it entering again. But it would be better to identify stocks where valuations are attractive or where they have abruptly fallen because of some uh, event or the other. And long-term fundamentals are in place. So you could accumulate those stories. Uh, Petronet LNG is one story that I feel is very aptly placed in that bucket. The dividend deals are good. Uh, the stock has very good long-term prospects. I think the recent capex did not go very well with the market. Uh, but I think long term it should be a very good bet if the dividend deals are robust and I think uh, you could be looking at very decent 30-40% kind of upside on the stock. So similar deals, you work out stocks where they have gone down and uh, maybe the growth prospects etc are good in the long term. So I think identify those stocks or wait for around 300-400 uh, point correction, maybe the market gives up some of its exuberance, then you get a chance to buy into it. Right, so actually we have a record high on the Nifty again. Uh, the index now 20,851, 163 points higher. Uh, the morning high has now been taken out. And uh, at the moment, uh, this is uh, mainly 
on account of uh, just let me tell you the stocks uh, uh, within the index uh, that are showing this handsome rally okay icici bank uh, now 1013 fresh record high 2.2 percent higher remember uh, this is the main driver for the nifty as well as uh, the bank nifty hdfc bank one percent higher 1623 and you have reliance uh, 0.7 percent higher 2437 remember today's moves have been accompanied by a very very sharp uh, jump up in uh, volume as far as index heavyweights are concerned i'll just share the list of movers and draggers as far as the nifty is concerned uh, icici bank contributing 38 points adani ports uh, now at a fresh record high up 14 percent and now in freshly in four digits has contributed 30 23 points HDFC Bank has contributed 15 points, Reliance 15 points and State Bank of India 13 points. The call that I had mentioned 20,800 has now become very very active. At the moment uh, uh, that I see in front of me uh, it is at 122 rupees. Please keep an eye out on this one. Sakshi what are you watching? Uh, the power space stocks has been buzzing, so let's uh, revisit them. I think power grid is at 4% higher, 221. Uh, NTPC at 285 right now, again a 4% move. CESE uh, from the Nifty 500 basket is now up almost 6% right now. So the entire energy space, power space is buzzing. Um, Sharad, uh, any topic from the power space? Uh, within the power space, I think... Uh Power grid, we are very bullish long term, mm. uh, but uh, the way the prices have gone up in the short term, I think uh, one, one and a half year is very aptly discounted. And uh, most of the stocks, I think if you would want to look at them, uh, maybe one, one and a half year is largely discounted in most cases, whether it is NTPC, power grid or the likes of other stocks. So I think it's better you uh, do not enter if you have a shorter horizon, one, one and a half year, two year kind of horizon. Uh, but if you have a longer horizon where you are willing to stay in for a period of five to seven years, I think uh, power grid could be a very good story. The type of uh, infrastructure required to improve the grid network and everything. Uh, power grid should be in a very sweet spot with renewable energy taking center stage. Uh, the type of uh, rebranding uh, and re-rating that the stock can get over the next uh, four to five years could be very substantial. Mm -hmm. uh, though in the short term, one and a half, two years, I think uh, the valuations are summing up everything. Even NTPC is trading at what around uh, 12, 13 times. So I don't think there is scope for these stocks to appreciate from current levels over the period of one and a half, two years. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you are wanting to stay very long term, I think Power Grid is a very good story for a story to stay put for next uh, four to five years. Okay. I was speaking to uh, Sony Patnaik before you uh, on technical parameters as far as the metal stocks are concerned. Uh, how would you be looking at this fresh move 3% higher the Nifty Metals Index is now trading at, uh, at 74.15. And a lot of stocks are uh, jumping up in trade today. Uh, which is your favorite stock as far as uh, the metals pack is concerned? We have uh, Jindal Stainless, Hindustan Zinc, Sale, Hindalco, Tata Steel, all upwards of 1% to 5% off. Uh, see, I think uh, the metal pack is going up a bit, but uh, largely it's been range bound and I failed to see very good triggers over the next one and a half, two years where a material rally would uh, uh, propagate out of this. Uh, for Tata Steel, our targets are around 135, uh, 9, 10 times. Uh, for sale, etc. also, I think that they are trading at around target price, maybe uh, 5, 10 rupees here, there, even for Nalco. Uh, as a theme, I think copper is a good thing to play, aluminium could be a good thing to play long term. Uh, but at these valuations, I don't think uh, much is left on the table. Though a risk on remains, then there is a possibility that maybe over the next 15-20 days, you might see a rally in these stocks. But I don't think you see sustainable up move in these stocks over a period of time. Hindustan copper is one stock uh, where valuations are not very attractive at current prices, but I think long term the story is very good. And uh, if I had to bet on something, I think Nalco could be something that you could bet on over the long term. That's a good story to bet on uh, as the aluminium side of the business picks up. And I think that is a good growth story. And the valuations are not stretched there, but uh, roughly fairly valued. But the scope for growth is better in aluminium and copper stocks. As a contra bet, if you want to take some risks uh, of a different type, I think Vedanta is the one that offers the most decent upside, I think. 20-30 rupees kind of upside would be there even if the stock is to trade at fair value. 
I think as risk on returns and uh, there is a bit of risk appetite in the markets, uh, maybe uh, Vedanta would be the best place to give you some money in the short term, at least 20, 30 rupees. Okay. Uh, let's look at the other side of the market, Sakshi. And uh, a very, very strong move is coming on the back side of par. It's ABB. Uh, remember, this is the company which is, of course, uh, uh, a global MNC uh, of European parentage at uh, 4870, a fresh record high uh, on this one. And uh, this is in sync with the two day move. Uh, remember, the moment uh, uh, news came in that uh, uh, the BJP has retained power uh, within the three states, uh, one, two of them, and added uh, uh, a lot of steam to its. Uh, electoral strength it's the infrastructure pack that is doing immensely well BHEL uh, up about 10 percent uh, uh, since the earnings came, the results came in and it's ABB uh, at uh, uh, somewhere 4.8 percent higher uh, with an open interest of about 16 percent addition this is uh, looking fairly fairly good let's get Sharad's view in uh, Sharadji what would be the reason behind this very sharp jump in stocks like Siemens and ABB? I think the broader expectation is very simple that we are looking at a very stable government even in 2024. And if that is the case, most of the CapEx commitments would remain as it is. And obviously, over the last one or two months, we have seen a pickup in the private side of the CapEx as well. Uh, that had been absent for quite some time, actually, since post-COVID. So that's a very good uh, news for these companies. Uh, the type of expenditure that we are doing in railways, the other avenues that are opening up in defense, infra has already been at the front of most of the capex. I think as industrial capex also picks up and also on the private side, there is a huge improvement, there is a huge possibility of improvement in the numbers of most capital goods companies. So I think that is what is driving, but uh, I would not be comfortable buying them at these prices. I think most of them are factoring in uh, Bale, uh, ABB and Simmons are trading at obnoxious valuations. They always do, but uh, these are even more obnoxious by their historical standards. And uh, considering Bale, I think the type of re-rating that can happen because of the defense portfolio is substantial. Uh, but a major part of the re-rating is already done. If you look at FY26, the expectation is six and a half, seven rupee kind of earnings. And based on that, it is already trading at what 180, 190. So I think most of the good news is priced in. Uh, one stock where I think uh, comp valuation kind of uptick can happen is still LNT. I think the valuations are not as stretched there. Uh, they are they might look stretched vis-a-vis -vis what LNT has got historically. But if you compare them to the peers like uh, Bale or ABB or Simmons, I think LNT is still placed for another 15-20% kind of upside. So if I have to bet on the capital goods space, I would bet on the largest LNT. I think valuations are comfortable and size obviously is an advantageous position for them. Absolutely. The quietest, most hardworking stock on the Nifty is LNT. And I never fail to mention this, that one complete screen uh, on my setup here is devoted to uh, this particular stock. Very quiet achiever and uh, is doing wonders on the chart as well today. 3347. Uh, this is where uh, uh, India's top engineering and construction firm is trading. Needless to add a record high. Uh, Sharaji, if I were to put... Uh, uh, force on you and request you to name one nifty stock that will outperform the index in the short to medium term say one year what would that stock be i think sbi across uh, retail corporate book and the GNP is uh, okay. constantly coming down. We already have a net NPA at 0.67%. So I think SBI should be a good bet for targets to start with targets of around 700 and then gradually moving up to 750 maybe. Okay. Um, Sharad, uh, would you look at Titan at 3547? Um, again, it's on the move. Uh, of course, the record run for Titan also continues. Uh, what is the next target in your mind for Titan? Uh, and uh, would you still advise investors with a very, very long term view, uh, even at 3547, to buy into Titan? No, basically, in terms of my theories, I feel, again, the valuations are a bit stressed. It is already trading at, what, 55, 60 times a year forward. And the growth rates are not expected to be very robust for Titan. 
and I'm not very optimistic about gold prices either. So I think uh, uh, most of the appreciation that you see in Titan in terms of the top line and bottom line is actually still coming from gold. Uh, if the other businesses do pick up, which is the IVR business or the watch business, in addition to that, Carrot Lane could be a very good uh, um, mover for the business uh, from the business side for Titan. If these things pick up, then I think I would be looking at Titan. But uh, under the current scenario, I think uh, we are expecting very subdued growth on a year on a year basis. So one or two quarters here and there could happen where you could see a normal rise because of gold prices being much higher. Uh, but beyond that, I think these valuations, uh, the stock would find it hard to sustain. So I would not advise investors, uh, my investors to buy into Titan at these valuations. Okay, fine. Um, we'll do something. We'll take a very, very short break right now, Sharad. So when we return, we will continue to discuss more stock ideas and market strategies with you. Stay with us. Darwin Platform Group of Companies is one of the fastest growing diversified Indian conglomerates with global footprints. It is setting up offices globally and tying up with companies across the globe for multiple sectors. The company has ventured into real estate and construction, stockbroking and finance, arms and ammunition, mining, airlines and many other sectors. In today's rapidly evolving business environment, when risk is omnipresent, managing risks is no longer just about taking a few boxes. Businesses need to maintain a panoramic view of risks to stay ahead of the curve. Join us to explore how organizations can rethink risk to unlock new possibilities and become fit for future at PwC Presents, de-risking the future in collaboration with Business Today. Welcome back. You're watching Business Today Television. This is Market Today. I'm Sakshi and with me is Shell Bhatnagar. Also with us is Sharad Avasti, Head of Research at SMFIS and uh, who's discussing with us details on what to expect in the markets going forward and where should you be putting in your fresh money. Uh, Sharad, tell us uh, for the new year, uh, one or two key themes that you believe can outperform the markets. I think renewable energy should be a theme that you should be looking at, uh, uh, specifically solar power. And as we spoke about earlier, power grid could benefit. The grid infrastructure requirements are huge. So there are companies that are working on that. Uh, railways could be a very huge theme. I think the type of capex that they are going to continue doing, uh, that should result in very good uh, numbers for some of the companies. Uh, I think uh, so next year, broadly, if you want to sum up too, I think it would be renewable energy, particularly solar power. And the second big theme could be uh, out of defense and railways, uh, primarily defense. I think defense could be a very big theme uh, because most of the order books could uh, roughly go up to 2.5 times for most companies. So that could be a theme that could do very well. So within solar, I think uh, Sterling Wilson Solar is a very good idea long term. Uh, I mean, think uh, there is a huge potential for the company to become a multi-bagger kind of story. And on the defense side, there are many names, uh, but I think uh, the type of uh, news that we are hearing regarding an order for Cochin Shipyard, uh, that could be a story that uh, could have 70-80% upside from here uh, once that order culminates, because that could result in uh, your expected top line over the next one or two years doubling uh, from the expectation of around 4,000-5,000 across. So I think uh, that is one idea that could do very well over the next year or so. So two segments, uh, defense and uh, renewable energy, particularly solar. And within that, I think SW Solar and uh, Coaching Shipyard could be very good ideas to bet on. Okay. Right. Uh, let's also discuss uh, another space then uh, with you, Sharad. And uh, the next space that I wanted to discuss with you uh, is something that we've been discussing through the day also today with our other guests, and that is uh, the cement pack. And, uh, you know, where do you really see promise coming in? We've seen Ambuja, ACC, Ultratech, JK Cement, um, you know, all of this cement pack, uh, Grassim as well, moving up in trade and a very, very sharp move at that. Do you believe cement space uh, has a structural story to play on for the long term? 
Yes, certainly. I think we are very bullish on real estate. So obviously it has to percolate down to cement demand and that should do very well in the long term. Uh, for some of the frontline names, which are market fancies, I think the valuations are a bit stretched, specifically ultra tech. So that would ultimately boil down to Grassim as well. Uh, but for Grassim, I think the paint industry uh, entrance is the new idea that I am looking at. And I think that could uh, drive valuations for going forward. Uh, on the cement side, particularly, uh, I have been bullish about ACC. I think that's a stock that can play a huge catch up in terms of valuation. Uh, I think that will remain my top pick. Uh, beyond that, within the larger players, I think Dalmia Bharat is also trading at uh, decent valuations and can offer very good growth, the type of capex they are doing. Among the smaller players, I think if you want to look at a company where you could get some takeover news or rumors like that, then maybe Heidelberg. Uh, but if you are looking at valuation comfort and something that is operationally very uh, efficient, I think JK Lakshmi Cement is an ideal bet. The capacities are much larger than something like a Heidelberg. And uh, the valuations are still very attractive in spite of the recent run-up. So I think JK Lakshmi could be a very good long-term bet if you want to play on the mid-cap side of the cement. Okay, and uh, this dovetails uh, very well into another one of our uh, market analysts, uh, Mr. Gorang Shah, who often recommends JK Lakshmi Cement. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's 321, uh, the Nifty on its sixth day of a fabulous, fabulous rally on the Lal Street is at a fresh record high, 20,854. Uh, up about 165 points on the nifty bank you have 47,000 in front of you another 570 point rally as far as uh, uh, this particular index is concerned both these indices at fresh record highs the bank nifty uh, on t minus one remember tomorrow is its weekly expiry and uh, it's uh, run up fairly sharply today now let's look at uh, the index components uh, on the nifty the top two gainers are adani ports and adani enterprises uh, fresh record high on adani ports 15.7 percent higher uh, 4.57 crore shares have been traded uh, this is a 7x times its five day average and in terms of uh, number of crores uh, Adani Ports has about 4,400 crore rupees worth of transactions. Adani Enterprises, 17% higher, 2981. 6,278 crore worth of shares have been traded. And if you look at the volume, uh, this is a 6.5x multiple when it comes to uh, the daily traded volume today of 2.24 crore rupees. Apart from that, a uh, fantastic move on ICICI Bank, 1,000. 11. This is a fresh record high for this counter. Power grid 222.50, 4.5% higher, fresh record high for this particular index. And if you look at the other uh, all time highs on the Nifty, they have been NTPC 285.15, MM 1684.7% 1 higher, Sakshi discussed Titan 35.47, Grasim is what Sharaji likes. Axis Bank, SBI Life, Ultratech Cement, and Bharti Airtel. This is the wrap up of the Nifty as we see it today. 170 points higher, 20,860. What else is moving in the FNO space apart from index heavyweights? Uh, it's the day for the power sector stocks. ABB, fresh record high, 4857, up 5%. Apart from that, you have Apollo Tires, 458, 1.9% higher. Federal Bank 156.75, 1.8% higher. Colgate Palmolive, Hindustan Aeronautics, Bajaj Fo Bharat Forge are the counters that are moving fairly rapidly. Rallis is something that uh, I have marked earlier, 10% higher at 257.70. This is the broad cross section of what has been an another blowout day as far as the Nifty is concerned. Remember, very, very high traded volumes today. Uh, of course, the attention span has been taken away by the Adani group of stocks, but the banks bringing it on. HDFC Bank, ICICI Bank, 4,176 crores in turnover on HDFC Bank and 3,111 crores on ICICI Bank. SBI and Access following suit. So it's the rally of the big boys as far as markets are concerned today on the Nifty. Sakshi. 
Absolutely. Uh, Sharad, I'd uh, like you to focus on the mid and the small cap space which has widely outperformed so far. But do you expect the outperformance to continue? And in case there are any top stocks from the mid cap basket that you would still advise that investors can still take a bet and uh, there is a room uh, for uh, growth even from here on? Yeah, I think again, it's a basket that's pretty large, though commenting on the fact that whether it would remain or continue to outperform in the way the FIN flows have started, most probably large caps would attract, would attract most of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think domestic inflows are strong enough and uh, the type of faith that the domestic investor has shown, shown in the mid cap and the quality mid caps should continue to do well. Uh, it is very difficult to uh, differentiate uh, between the good and bad ones. But I think uh, you should take a view that uh, wherever the companies are good and the management is strong, I think those are mid caps that have the possibility to oscillate into the uh, small cap to mid cap or mid cap to large cap kind of universe. And the type of money that can be made there is substantial, but it needs some detailed understanding and research on that. Uh, we have some ideas in the space. I think uh, ABFRL could be one idea. Uh, which we are very bullish. I think the type of reversal that we are seeing uh, around the festive demand and everything and the type of numbers that they're putting on. I think going forward, they have strong brands in place. That could be one strong story. Uh, Crompton could be one very strong re-rating story with targets of around 280, 290 to start with. Uh, smaller new listing, IQ lighting, that could be a very strong story to bet on. Uh, they are doubling their uh, space in terms of the occupied area, the factory uh, capacity. And in the next stage, they would again uh, add a similar capacity. So long term, that could be a multi-bagger kind of story. And beyond that, the multi-bagger, the, the mid-cap and small-cap universe is pretty large. Actually, you can look at a lot of ideas. Uh, but at this point, these are the three ideas that come to mind. So I think ABR Farrell, uh, Crompton Greaves Consumer and uh, IQ Lighting would be very good ideas to look at from this point. Okay, fair enough then. Um, Sharad, uh we will thank you at this point in time and wrap up uh, the markets at this stage as well. Many thanks for being with us and sharing uh, wonderful stock ideas. And we shall continue to touch base with you to discuss more about the markets going forward. It's another day of record highs, ladies and gentlemen, for the stock market. So, uh, you know, brilliant green screen on your uh, uh, screens that you can see. 20,857, definitely a record closing high, record high for the markets. 0.82% of an uptick that you can see on the nifty the nifty bank up by 1.1 percent so of course the banks are really participating right from the front in this rally that we've been seeing 46,977 currently slight dips from the all-time high levels of over 47,000 that you've seen uh, for the nifty bank the nifty mid cap 100 at 44,144 odd levels as well again the record highs are on the the mid cap basket continue uh, and it's back at the day's high level. Half a percent of an uptick can be seen for this one. Sectorally, it's the metal index that's now over 3.2 percent higher in trade as the top moving sectoral gainer. Oil and gas, PSU banks, private banks, consumer durables as among those uh, that were gaining. What did not do well today in an otherwise uh, uh, bullish market? IT stocks declined half odd percent, realty stocks fell sluggish half odd percent of a fall, healthcare stocks slightly lower in trade as well. But on the nifty stocks, the Adani stocks definitely ruled the roost. Adani Enterprises is ending the day with over 17.5 percent gains. Um, Adani Ports up over 15 percent. Power Grid and NTPC, the power space stocks continue to buzz with over four and a half percent gains. BPCL, a State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, the other movers as far as the nifty stocks are concerned. On the lower side, Divis Laboratories, HUL, HCL Tech, LTI, Mindtree, Bajaj Auto, Aisha Motors, some of the two-wheeler stocks and slight uh, bit of negativity from the healthcare pack. FNO Space again is ruled by the Adani stocks. Uh, four of them are up into the green and ruling as far as the FNO gaining action is concerned. Adani Enterprises, Adani Ports, ACC, Ambuja and uh, also uh, then Power Grid is one of the top movers as far as uh, this space is concerned. Uh, Shell, uh, your closing comments. Well, Sakshi, another great day and uh, another day when on the last street you've seen bears uh, uh, running absolutely towards their hiding and in their caves. <laughs> A very, very smart move coming on the Nifty led by all the big boys. And the reason why I say this, Sakshi, is that they were under-owned and under-appreciated all the blue chips that we are talking about, see how HDFC Bank is moving up. Nifty is up 15-16% when it comes to 
the year to date move hdfc bank is up only 3 4% year to date so this rally will ensure that stocks that are uh, suppressed mainly on account of fii selling over the last 6 months will now come back you will see a very strong number on uh, fii uh, uh, net buying today sakshi yesterday it was 2000 crores uh, let's hope this is far better uh, when it comes to uh, today's number and uh, the rally now has uh, fresh wings the nifty adding uh, 168 points fresh record close the nifty bank adding 534 points fresh record close and this is the sixth continuous day of an uptrend the markets are rejoicing what they see is a semi final victory of the bjp in the three states that we've been discussed so far and of course the march towards uh, may 2024 is now getting louder deeper broader and more profitable sakshi absolutely and with that we will uh, wind up this entire show but do stay tuned on to business today television for a whole lot more coverage from the world of business and finance many thanks for watching this special edition of market today Darwin Platform Group of Companies is one of the fastest growing diversified Indian conglomerates with global footprints. It is setting up offices globally and tying up with companies across the globe for multiple sectors. The company has ventured into real estate and construction, stock broking and finance, arms and ammunition, mining, airlines and many other sectors. In today's rapidly evolving business environment, when risk is omnipresent, managing risks is no longer just about taking a few boxes. Businesses need to maintain a panoramic view of risks to stay ahead of the curve. Join us to explore how organizations can rethink risk to unlock new possibilities and become fit for future at PwC Presents. De-risking the future in collaboration with Business Today.